Welcome you absolute legends, I am Thorn with Freddy's IMP, I am back and today I'm going over one of my favourite niche houses which is Penhaligans and I've got a top 15 for, uh, to go through with you today, I've got no honourable mentions so I'm going to crack straight on into the list because there's a lot to get through and I don't want to waste all your time. But the first one I've got came out in 2005, it's Opus 1870, now I don't know how you, well you can see it, that's the bottle. And this one is a really nice one. It's very fresh, it's very nice. It's got that yuzu, pepper, incense, cedar, sandalwood, and some rose in this. And this one is great for this time of year. It's very fresh, a little bit floral, but not over the top. It's really easy to wear. Again, um, this I think it's the oldest style bottle. I think they slightly changed the bottle, but that's fine. I don't think there's much change in the reformulation. Um, but yeah, really, Nice, fresh, uplifting fragrance, especially for the summer. Great fragrance. Opus 1870 is my number 15. Number 14. And we're going to go into the portrait line, which is where they have this fun head heads on. My head's just not coming on. It's the impotent of Cousin Matthew. Now, this one, again, came out in 2019. Oh. It's only got three notes in it, apparently, but... I don't believe that for a second. It's got mandarin orange, it's pettigrane, and some patchouli. Now, again, it's an easy to wear fragrance. It's, especially for summertime, it's really fresh, really easy to wear. Don't want to say more than that because, quite frankly, if you tell you smell it, it's, like I say, it's a citrus floral fragrance, but nothing very complex about it. And sometimes in, when you've got fragrances, you don't always want overcomplicated, especially in the summer, and this one is kind of up there for me. So number 14, the impotent cousin Matthew from the portrait line. Number 13 is a newish one for my collection, and it's called a Bayale. Now this one, this one again is got it's quite a fresh one again. Came out in 2014, it's got lemongrass. Lavender, neroli, oh wait, moss and amber and some musk. And again, this is a little more complicate, complex. Um, again, I would use it spring, summer, fall, early fall. Um, I don't know, it might work in winter. Um, but again, great, easy, fresh rain fragrance. Nothing too complex about it, but just enough complexity with it. Again, it's got that, it's the lemongrass that really pops off your skin straight away. It's a very, very potent um, herb when you use it. Great fragrance. Again, it, it'll, I wonder if it will cut through the air in the night sky in the winter. That would be an interesting one to try. But Bayer is my number 13. Number 12. Now, we're going for some big boy hits now. And this one is a really nice fragrance. Something, again, for the portraits line, it's Roaring Radcliffe. Now, this one is a heavy hitter. Wow. 2016, it's got rum, it's got um, tarragon, tobacco, honey, la rose. It's got loads of really nice things in it. Now, this for me is definitely full winter, going out on some special occasion. This is where this will come up absolute trumps every time. And no one will have a clue what you're wearing. It smell, smells very classy. Um, it does smell Middle Eastern, which I was surprised at, it, but it does smell really nice. It'll definitely send you apart from everyone else. So number 12 is Roaring Radcliffe. I think really a great fragrance. Number 11. And this is a oh, targeted to females, but I'm wearing it because, quite frankly, I can. Again, it's from the Portraits line. It's Heartless Helen. Where's that? Oh, it is really... It came out in 2019. Mandarin orange, two bruises, and some woods, and it's that's it. It doesn't tell you any more than that. But again, if you smell it, it doesn't smell like it's just got those three notes in it. I think there's more to it than that. But again, the two bruises is very nice in this. Again, it's slightly unisex, but again, it says it's sold for women. I tell you now, I would pull this off easily. And again, a really great scent. So number eleven, heartless Helen. Again. I have to say, I love the caps on these. These are awesome. So yeah, number 11, this one, Heartless Helen. 
Number 10, and now we're going to start getting some really interesting ones. This is called Artisema. Now, it should have a cap on it, but for some reason I've left it upstairs. It came out in 2002, and this one is a really unusual one. Nectarine Vanilla, which, again, you'd never really hear about in fragrances. It's kind of an unusual one. Very juicy, though. Violet, apple, musk, and some amber in this, and this one... It's a little 50ml one, but I'm glad I've got this one. I don't know if this has been discontinued, but if it has, I'll tell you what. It's a really fruity, fresh, uplifting fragrance. Especially great, the hot of the weather, I think this is the where it comes up really trump. So, number 10, Artizima. I think that's how you say it. But no, man, I could probably go it wrong and they'll sack me. I don't care. Number 9. Now, again, we're going back to the portraits line. I've got a lot from this line, and I'll tell you what, I love all of them. It's the uncompromising Zohan. Now, there's not Zohan? So not Zohan. That's a different thing. Oh, and this is the Saffron Oud um, Rose Combo. Vertiver and some Sandalwood in this one. And this is just money. This has got the holy trifecta of, like, Middle Eastern... Flavours of like say the oud, rose and saffron blended perfectly here. Nothing's overpowering anything. The rose in here is very, very sensual. Slightly jammy I'd say. Um, but again, put this on an evening and I'll tell you now, no one will have a clue what you're wearing. But they'll tell you now, you'll be smelling amazing. So this one is a little bit of a hidden gem for me. Number nine is the uncompromising Zohan. Not Sohan. Oh, why have I got Zohan in the bag? I probably because I watched it the other day, to be honest. Uh, number eight. Now, this one's a little bit of an unusual one. Again, um, this is the Equinox Bloom. So, this one. There's a really good atomizer on this one. It's came out in 2016. Neroli Violet Brown Sugar, which I never thought was going to be in a thing. Um, gives it that really. Um, Slightly toffee vibe, if that makes sense. And broxin and some orange blossom, and it kind of permeates all the freshness of other things with the sugar, but then the broxin comes through with this. I think this is targeted for women, if I can remember correctly. But I tell you what, gents, if you want to smell really like creamy and delicious, Equinox Bloom is really underrated. Great fragrance. Equinox Bloom, nine number eight. Right, number seven. Again, we're going way back to the portrait line, because I can. And this is the Blazing Mr. Sam. And uh, my cap, for some reason, is a bit loose on this one. Don't know why. And then, it came out in 2018. And this one, again, is a spicy, sexy fragrance. Uh, will I wear it all year? Probably not. I Probably the only time I would wear it is in summer. It's got cardamom, cinnamon, tobacco, vanilla, and some cedar. And again, it's a, quite a masculine fragrance. This is for the this is for the big boys. This is for the guys who go, you know what? F everything. I'm the man. They wear this. This is a boss-like fragrance, and it's amazing. Really, really good. Again, you probably wear it in fall and winter really easily, and people will go, ooh, what are you wearing? Blazing Mr. Sam. It's my number seven. It's a great fragrance, but I say it's not the most versatile, but great fragrance anyway. Number six. We're going through them today because I wanna, don't want to be longer than 15 minutes for you guys. This is a called uh, Blahim Bokeh. I think I've said that all right, but again, probably no my luck. I've got sacked. Oh, this came out in 1902. This is the oldest fragrance I've ever owned. Now, I don't think this actual bottle was made in 1902, but this is a, released in 1902. Amalfi lemon, lime, pen, black pepper, and moss. Now, this is a quite a simple fragrance, but my God. The pine actually um, get, accentuates the freshness of the um, lemon and lime, which makes it really, really nice. Again, you could probably wear this all year round, no problem. Um, great scent, and um, the juice kind of does reflect, reflect what it is. It's a light green, slightly yellow tinge to it. 
and I think great fragrance. If you want to wear something that's really uplifting, sharp, but kind of got like slight green edge to it, this one is a great number. Number six, Bl Blahim Bouquet. Go if I've got that right. If not, I'm sure you absolute legends will let me know in the comments because you do that for me and that's great. Number five. Now this is where we get to some real monster boys. And this again, back to the portrait line. I've got loads from this line and I think they're great. This is the tragedy of Lord George. And again, look how cool the top is. That is craftsmanship at its finest, that is. Love it. Oh, it's not got a lot in it, but it's got some uh, woods, brandy, amber and tonka. And that's where it kind of edges for me. Because it's got that tonka, amber, but it's boozy, it's sensual. It's a great fragrance. Actually, I reckon you could pull this off most of the year with this one. Great little number. Again, massively underrated. I think it was 2018 it came out. No, wait. Or was it 2016? 2016 or 2018, I was one of the two. And let me know in the comments if you remember it. But the tragedy of Lord George is a great little number. Again, all of these are not cheap. Don't get it twisted. Most of these are expensive. But if you find a good deal on them, you might want to think about getting one or two of them. But the number five, the tragedy of Lord George, is a great one. All right, number four. Again, I kind of left my cap up. So I'm being a bit rubbish today, I've got to be honest. And it's called, I'm probably going to butcher this one as well, Endoim Cologne. Now, again, probably butcher that one. I don't know if you can see that, like that. But I'll write it in the description box anyway. And this came out in 2003. Again, this is kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Incenso by uh, Dolce & Gabbana. It's got bergamot, lavender, and a lot of lavender in this. Coffee, nutmeg and cardamom and it's a little bit of a spicy nuance and it's got just enough of everything that will keep people going, what is it? And it kind of keeps changing all the time with the spices and all the rest of it. But a great fragrance. The lavender is beautiful in this. So oh, it is a great scent and then you can wear this all year round. This is one of the best ones to wear, especially because it's a cologne. It says it's cologne. I don't believe it. I think it's more like an EDT. Um, concentration and it does perform decent well. So number four, it's a end on. Um, I can't say ND Moin Cologne. I've probably absolutely annihilated, but that's number four. Oh, that was a terrible one. But number three, I'm not going to mess this one up. <clears throat> and it's called from back from the portraits line. It's the remarkable success of Mr. Harrod. And again, the bear on this is so cool. I'm losing my voice a bit, so just bear with me. And this one came out in 2017, but this one is a like a fruity tobacco fragrance. It's got plum, it's got raspberry, but it's got tobacco in it. Jasmine, cedar, and oud. And this one is a really sensual one. And I'm trying to think. There's another one that reminds me of this. We had raspberry. I can't think what it is. But there's one another fragrance. I'm gonna have to look what I've got in my collection, but it's similar to this. It's got oud and raspberry and something other bits in it. And I have to say it works really, really well. Um again, fall and winter was where I'm gonna hammer at this one. Um it's gonna be in my fall and winter rotation, I'm sure. But the remarkable success of Mr. Harrod is great. Really great fragrance. Yeah, I love the fruitiness in it as well. It gives it a nice good contrast to the woods and all the rest of it. So Number three, the remarkable sets of Mr. Harrod. Two and one. And these two are just something else. I'll be honest with you. This one is number two, and it's a damn good one. And it's called Cairo. Now, this one, I think it was, came out in 2019. And this one, again, it's got that rose, um, saffron, oud combo, which is a fantastic one. But vanilla and sandalwood and some cedar in it, and it gives it a good, like, punch in the face. Now, Cairo, kind of in Egypt, you're thinking slightly middle. It definitely gives that vibe of um, spices that you get from Africa. I do get why people would like this one. Again, got the holy trinity of Middle Eastern notes, like I say, the oud, saffron, and rose. 
Great fragrance. I really love this one a lot. Massively like this one a lot. But again, sometimes you have to work out when you're going to wear it. But again, I've had a good old dent into mine. So yeah, number two is Cairo. Great fragrance. So it leads me to number one. <clears throat> and this came out two years ago. And when I smelt it, I just was like, I was in love with it. I'll be honest, I will not lie, it's a great scent. And it's called Hafalti Leather, and this one is just something else. And this has got some cardamom plum. It's very sensual, it's very inviting. Violet, oud, jasmine, and some incense. It's a very mysterious, going out fragrance. If you put this on and you want to make an impression on someone, and you're thinking, how to do it in the most mysterious way? This is it. This is just ridiculously nice. Um, so number one, for the mysteriousness and the fact that it's just such a great scent. I love that it's a lot. Hafalfi Leather, my number one. So there you go. Right, so there you have it. My top 15 from the House of Penhaligans. Now, I will say this, you don't have to buy things from Penhaligans, but they do make some phenomenal fragrances, and they're not cheap. So if you feel like you want to treat yourself once in a while, there's some options there you can maybe go for. As always, if you want me to review any of them, let me know in the comments. My scent of the day, I went kind of with a sexy tobacco lavender bomb. I went with Dolce Gabbana Intenso, really underrated. Still, it's been discontinued, but you can still find this for a good price. So, I went with this one. It's a sexy little nuance, but really enjoy it a lot. Intenso was my scent of the day. And as always, God, my throat's going bad. If you've got a top 10 list, a fragrance review, or a question, please hit me up. Honestly, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. As always, I'm on Instagram with fun with fragrances. And as always, you absolute legends smell amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.